Peace to the family. Peace to you guys. Let's really get it in. Okay. Let's wait for you guys to roll in. I have a great deal to talk to you guys about. Very interesting. Yeah, let's talk. Whose bright idea was it to destroy the community? Who was, who was the guy that said, yo, right before Trump said, hey, we're going to deploy thousands of soldiers if the states are not demonstrating more strength and aggression towards protesters? Whose bright idea was it to post these black pictures? You're like, don't post. But then they post. And when they post, they post black, just black. And they say, today's the day we're not going to tell anybody anything that's going on. Whose idea was it to make sure no one says anything and just post black pictures? Not black pictures of black love, black families, just an image of black. Whose idea was it for us to censor ourselves at the climax of us being oppressed? How y'all just fall for this kind of weird things? Now, I was quiet because I know generally I think differently. And some people think I just want to disagree to disagree. So I just make my money and mind my business. When all this protest and everything was going on, I was quiet for six days straight. I was quiet for six days straight. People were like, yo, you must be down with them. How come you ain't saying nothing? And I keep telling people I'm not a news reporter. I don't have to tell people what they already know is going on. I only talk when I see a perspective that I feel is relatively different, extremely important, or I'm invested emotionally about. That contrast to popular belief or understanding. <clears throat> Real talk. So, I'm not the guy on YouTube or Facebook that needs to get money from reporting things that you already know about. No more than I need to gossip. When people say, hey, polite, you need to respond to this guy over here. He's talking about you. And I say, no, I don't. They say, no, it would just help people. It would help you. You stuck in limbo. It don't help me. It don't pay my bills. That ain't the category that I'm in. That's not my genre. I don't make money off of prying into other people's lives and saying, hey, I'm exposing you. That's not what I do. I actually have talent. They don't take talent for that. Uncreative people sit down and they talk about other people's lives so YouTube can pay them coins. So they get money for attempting to destroy other people's lives. Their own people. Let me make it clear. So the first thing I have to address is the rules of engagement when it comes to Brother Polite. When you come in this side of the cipher, I always have to impart wisdom. Share ideas that can motivate us to secure our, our future and the lives of our children, the lives of our significant others. That's always my goal. I don't get on here and say, yo, tonight we're going to be talking about this brother. And oh my gosh, I got a lot to say to you about him. I don't have the time for that. That's not my thing. That's somebody else's thing. So never ask me to respond to what someone else is saying about me. Because I ain't got nothing to say about them because that's not my forte. I'm too creative to reduce myself to something like that. And so there's a backlash. <clears throat> Everything I say when it comes to these political times, there's a backlash from people who don't deal with political science. So I say, my goodness. That's why I didn't even talk about the, the image that people's posting a black picture, the screen, the blank meme. And some of them had the brother's face in there. Like, y'all cheating. It's supposed to be all black. I see his nose somewhere in there. The people get mad. And they say, yo, why you just never support what we're doing? you always going against your people. When they wanted to protest Gucci. I said, I'm not against protests and boycotts. But I'm like, let's look up the ticker symbol for Gucci. 
Oh, that's right. Nothing comes up when you press for a ticker symbol for Gucci because they don't have a stock symbol. They have a parent company called Karen. So I said, if you want to protest, we could do it any of a number of ways that has not been addressed. One of the ways we can address this is this. When you wanted to protest Gucci and we look up the ticker symbol, we can't find one. Oh, we find out, oh, that must mean they have a parent company. We look, oh, Caring is the parent company. And they have over 12 other brands, some of which that we say, I ain't dealing with Gucci no more. I'm going to buy St. Laurent. I'm going to buy Balenciaga. Unbeknown to the uneducated, Balenciaga and St. Laurent along with a host of other brands, is under Gucci. Pardon me. Under Karen. So all I said was, hey, you want to protest Gucci? Oh, let's stop buying Gucci. I said, I understand where you're coming from. I understand you don't know much about stocks. And in this particular instance, it demands our attention. When it comes to stocks, if you want to protest a brand in particular, first thing I want to know is if they went public. First thing I want to know is who owns them. If they have a parent company. And when I find out Gucci has a parent company, Karen, and I see all these other companies under it, what I want to do is make sure that my people don't call themselves not buying Gucci and now overcompensating by buying Balenciaga known to them that they're putting money back in Gucci's hands because all those brands are owned by the parent company, Karen. I want to know who's the CEO. I want to know who's the CEO's wife. I want to know all these things so we could apply pressure properly. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm speaking about political action. So somebody says, Brother Polite, I see you posting about money and everything. You posting receipts of people making all these all these thousands of dollars and hundreds in your stock class. We looking for some damn black solidarity. Why are you not posting a black image? I'm like, what black image? My daughter? No, no, just a black image. We're not supposed to post today. So we're not supposed to post, but we're posting a black image? A what? Oh, just, a, just make the screen black or don't post at all. Show some solidarity. I said, so I'm supposed to stop running my black business. Because you guys are for black people? The black businesses have to stop conducting business too during this protest? What are you talking about? I thought we was just angry that most of us is unemployed. Now you're telling me I can't run my black business so we can demonstrate black solidarity. Who came up with this crazy idea? It don't sound like black people. <laughs> and then listen, it gets crazy. So Trump, the day before this black image day, where we post a blank image that's black and no one is supposed to say anything. The day before that, Trump literally was like, yo, I don't like the level of aggression that the states are taking. And if they don't ante up on their aggression, I'm going to deploy soldiers into those communities. So he just told everybody, level up. The National Guard ain't enough. I'm going to bring the Marines. I'm going to bring the soldiers. The day after, everybody's like, yo, if you're in black America, don't say nothing to nobody. Why would we not say anything the day after someone says, be more aggressive against these people? <laughs> Why would you not say nothing? The best thing we are going for us is our ability to communicate at uncanny speeds in 2020 per this technology. If Facebook or YouTube or Instagram doesn't allow your post to go up, you get mad. So why are you not allowing your own post to go up? Why are you not mad that someone would even suggest this craziness to you? So I said, okay, fine. I hear what you guys are saying. I ain't even going to do a damn video about it. I didn't. I just mind my business because I don't agree with none of this BS. So here we go. I'll post a video today. Whoa, let's not forget the gang members. I tell the gang members, I say, yo, I don't want to hear nothing about checking in. I said, I don't want to hear you telling anybody they have to check in. Like you guys are running a damn hotel and you got to get a 
hundred or two hundred dollars security before someone checks in. I said I don't want to hear nothing about it. You guys are talking about no fly zone, like you own the airlines. This Negro can't fly here. You can't touch down in my city no more. You guys are saying your city, like your politicians, or you have someone lobbying on our behalf to change laws. You guys are saying you can't come on my block, like you guys are landlords. Like you own real estate. Suddenly everyone is oblivious to what gang members' ignorance is like. And they're telling me, stop bothering the gang members. Uh, you shouldn't be saying this, that, and the third about gang members. But like, uh, this is what they do. I said, I'm sorry. The gang members, I said, yo, so you want the gang members to go out there and get killed? It's a possibility. I considered it. I mean, they've been killing us the whole goddamn time. I ain't saying I want them to be murdered. I'm just saying they've been murdering people that look like us for smaller stuff, for quarterbacks, uh, QPs of weed, nickel bags, dimes, stepping on each other's sneakers, wearing different colors. I mean, come on. So now white folks is bullying us. I'm like, I got the perfect candidates that can help lead this war. I know some people that like killing black people all the time. Let's let's see if we can redirect their energy. <laughs> Yo, you shouldn't do that. They can get locked up. They don't care about getting locked up when they destroying each other's lives. Oh, that's not all gang members, Brother Plight. Yo, listen, I didn't know you guys were having all sorts of peer mediation groups and kumbayas this whole time. I didn't know. I'm just saying it's a disgrace that our brothers can wage war against each other to the point of massacring themselves imposing their will on each other to the point of genocide. And then they can go out there and show me pictures of them peacefully protesting because they're all proving me a point now. They're all saying, look, we out here working, Brother Plyas. I think you guys didn't get my point. I didn't know you guys can peacefully protest. The power of the white man who will make the crazed, confused, and ignorant Negroes who kill themselves quite often. He has made you go out there and beg for peace. <laughs> I will never take you guys serious. Yo, listen. I think people are very confused. I'm just built different. I don't give a dang who likes what I'm saying or not. I'm just like, yo, for real. You guys want revenge against each other. And you want justice when this white man start talking his talk. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane to me. I'm not telling people to hurt anybody. I don't want nobody to hurt anybody. I don't. I really don't want nobody to hurt nobody. I'm just saying. We should have a priority list of how we delegate responsibilities to the warrior class. I said where are the guns at. I just wanted to know because I thought we had a problem with gun violence in our community. So I thought we was going to have to beg the gang members and please don't solve this problem like you solve your problems with your own brother. I thought we would have had to beg them. Please don't make this thing uh, dangerous for us. And people give me all these cryptic codes. Yo, you know, <coughs> our people, we in the streets, polite. You better watch your mouth. We banging out here. We just not going to publicize everything. Oh, you mean like. When you have a problem with one of your brothers and you do these selfie videos talking about, I'm going to stand in front of your concert and bitch, when you come out, we're going to kill you. You might, Oh, now, now you're working in secret to defend black people, right? But you was announcing the crimes you was about to create on selfie mode just two weeks before the riots. But now you're doing everything in secret because you're really revolutionaries, right? And you're really banging on our behalf in secret, right? And these weak ass people in our community want to say, oh, leave them alone. You don't know. They really helping us. Leave them alone. <laughs> I don't care about that. <clears throat> Yo, listen. Listen to me carefully. These people are full of it. Now all of a sudden, our brothers know how to peacefully march and protest. I don't give a damn about no gang members peacefully protesting. I really don't care about that. 
I don't care about it. I don't care how positive these guys can get together and show everyone they can unite because we was being bullied. I don't care about that. I think it's nice that they're uniting, but when all this stuff calms down, right? The brothers are gonna go back to waging war against each other. How many times have we seen the kumbaya when we get our ass kicked by other people? Then, then we get together and we do what exactly? We go back and we start banging on each other again? Oh, yo, hold on. We're gonna stop fighting each other so we can peacefully engage this person killing us. But once they let up on killing us a little something, oh, yeah, your ass is mine, Negro. How many times have we seen it? So we just got to address it for what it is. We just got to say what it is. I don't like the fact it's like that. But don't tell me nothing about, yo, the gang members are getting together and they're peacefully walking. They're peacefully mad at somebody that's dealing with them violently. They're peacefully dealing with someone dealing with their people violently. So then I'm like, we got to get these gang members' heads checked. I'm just confused. <clears throat> for a second, I just thought they was in go mode 24 7 i thought we couldn't turn off the the gun mode at all i thought we couldn't turn off violent mode at all i thought we couldn't turn it off at no point in our lives i thought we could never turn it off but i found out who could turn it down when they turn up whitey whitey is magnificent it's because of gang members hypocrisy they're like 40 percent the reason why i believe in white jesus I don't believe in no black Jesus. But I damn sure believe in white Jesus. He been working some shit on our people. He, he is a magician. Whoever believe in white Jesus, he has empowered the white community with this power. Where Negroes who kill each other every single day of the week. You can't say nothing that they don't like. You can't use their signs or their symbols. They'll attack you. You can't come into their city without them saying you got to check in. You can't do nothing. That they don't like. Because they'll all get you. You should see the amount of threats I get. I'm like, Negro, uh, Zimmerman's still walking around. I don't believe you. I do believe you want to kill your own people. That No one's confused about you Negroes wanting to kill your own people. So you can stop typing me about it. I believe you really hate me that much. I believe it. You forget I come from that. But you see, I was wise enough to wake up. And I would be wrong to wake up and, and act like I don't see you for who you are because you are who I was. A hypocrite. I thought I was a damn gangster. But then when my people needed me most, I scurried. I ran. Tiptoeing through the tulips. You can hear rat piss on cotton when this man start working against us. That was me. I was really a coward. I wouldn't think twice about hurting one of my own brothers and sisters. And I unified with other brothers and sisters who was just as cowardly as me to go against other brothers and sisters that was just as cowardly as us. So now we want to act like gang members have all sorts of peer mediation groups and they secretly wasn't raising all the hell we have in our damn community. They're not selling the drugs. They're not using guns. They're not shooting each other. Oh, no, polite. No, leave them alone. They really care. They have to march. <clears throat> Don't say nothing about them. They wear blue. They wear red. They wear yellow. I don't give a damn. Because I'm sick. I'm tired of all this. I'm tired. I'm just a tired man. I'm exhausted. You can shoplift with the bags under my eyes. That's how tired I am. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of, yo, listen, here's the new one. <clears throat> I put up a video, and I'm like, yo, stop destroying your communities. It's stupid. Yo, stop calling protests riots. They're protests, my brother. God, son, that's a riot. There ain't no damn protest. I know what a protest is. That shit's a riot. You guys are out of control. Let me ask you something. If somebody came into your neighborhood... <clears throat> and disrespected your mother and went back into the neighborhood? What we do in black culture? We say we gotta pull up, right? We gonna, we gonna run down on them, that's what we say. What does that mean? That mean we gonna go into their neighborhood, not too far from ours, cause most of us are just a train stop or two away when we got beef, right? 
but we still call it their neighbor, it's the same neighborhood. We're going to run down on them, we're going to find them, we're going to track them down, we're going to beat them up. You have a problem with somebody in school, you find out what neighborhood they live in, you take some of your school friends, you catch them over there after school. This is what we do. So someone from another race bothers us. We won't even catch the bus, a train, or a Uber over there. We're going to destroy our community. They, they don't even got a splinter separated from their white picket fence. Not even a splinter has been severed from the white picket fence. The little damn gay-ass dog that's walking around on the green grass, the grass is still greener than our grass in the black community. No one stepped on it. No one goes in the neighborhood. Don't you know we were to protest in other people's communities? Their neighbors would start saying to the cops, yo, we don't need you abusing those black people because every time you do that, these Negroes wind up in our community raising hell. And then when it gets out of control, we got to sweep the floor. We got to move the spray paint. We got to, you see what happens? Well, guess what the, whose idea was it when we get beat up in our community, let's finish the job and just destroy the rest of our community. Whose idea is that? And then you Negroes is, Attacking me today on you on Instagram and YouTube. Yo, you blaming the victim. I'm like, the victim is being a freaking idiot. I don't give a damn how angry you are. You don't burn your own neighborhood. You got to come out every day and see your work. And guess what? The neighborhood where the perpetrator exists in, guess what? Guess what? It's clean. They don't even have a street cleaning day. They don't have street cleaning rules to move their car. Nothing's dirty over there. You burnt down so many places in America and even outside the country. You got people turned up. But the neighborhood where this guy is from is still clean. So guess what? Cowards again. Cowards. Oh, you doing the more? Yo, we want justice. You would have want revenge if it was a brother did it to you. You Negroes ain't get a damn book in the mail two years ago, and you called the feds on me. Keep that same energy. Then did YouTube's on me. I want to see him underground. When I catch that bitch ass for life, I ain't get my book. But you want justice for somebody else, right? But for your own brother, you hate your own brother. Because let's just kill all the spade a spade. You be mad about all sorts of other things that make you feel insecure about your own position. You hate your own. You hate your own. You hate yourself so much that when someone abuses you in your own neighborhood, you destroy your own neighborhood. Where they do that at? Just show me one race on planet Earth that when someone does something wrong to them, they say it's time to break the damn glass in my community. <clears throat> it's time to burn my own community down. Oh, you know what they say? They say, hey, these are white businesses. We, we left the black businesses alone. Let me explain something to you. And I'm going to read some of these silly comments today. <laughs> when you burn your community down, when you break the glasses, when you bust down the doors and steal the ATMs and steal the liquor, You do know the property values depreciate. And when the property value depreciates because the type of people that live in the community show that they're wild and they're reckless, and they burnt stuff down, the only people that benefit are one, the same white businesses you're talking about, you just gave them an alley-oop because they got insurance for those stores. They're going to be able to pocket some money, probably create another store. They're going to cut them corners. They know how to play the game. They gonna You just gave them a lot of money. So with all of this, yo, <clears throat> job well done. Y'all patting each other on the back. This white man. Oh, we're just going to get some insurance. You think if they couldn't afford your guy's destruction that they would... Yo, listen. I know you feel like <clears throat> we got them outnumbered. We got them out... <clears throat> listen. If cats ain't have insurance for their store, we would saw a civil war. If I know my store is insured and I know the type of bill I'm going to get, yo, please, uh, can you destroy that, that glass too? You left one of the glasses clean. Break that for me too. Store is insured. But you say, yo, we're destroying the white man's store, right? But when you depreciate the value, 
of your community because now when that happens, property value sinks. And then you same people two, three years from now are going to com complain and cry about gentrification. What is gentrification? <clears throat> it's when people of more affluent communities, people that make more money than you, people of more affluent communities come in to a lower income community and raise the criteria to uh, upper middle class or higher where the people that live there can't afford it. You hear the baby? Okay. So what makes sense today, three years later, two years from now, y'all be saying, yo, white people coming into our community and moving us out, making stuff too expensive. Because you made the community so cheap that they could afford to come in and create heaven on earth right over there. They can leave their community as it becomes too expensive for them. Migrate over to you. Make it more expensive for you. Perfectly affordable for them. And that's how you get moved out. I know you guys feel like you're going to get away with those crimes. <laughs> I know it. But the whole time we had to be in the house because of the coronavirus... They was putting up all these 5G towers. You may not understand what a 5G tower is all about, or 5G technology, but it collects data extremely fast. You may not know that your banking institutions and your financial institutions have agreements with the FBI, with the CIA, with Interpol, with the OCC. You may not realize that they share data <clears throat> why you why why is this important? Because your banking institution be like, yo, we can use your voice for ID. You don't even need a fingerprint no more. Before we used to be spooked out with the fingerprint. They like, yo, uh, just say your birthday. You know, okay, my birthday's August 10th. Okay, we got you, Mike. We got you. <clears throat> you got access to your account. I'm like, yo, hold on. I got access to my account for my voice. Really? I only spoke for like 12 seconds. Less, actually. I spoke for less than 12 seconds. You say, what does that data do? Oh, because when you're busting through the check cash, and you're like, yo, son, come on. Yo, I got the bag. You feel me? 5G is like, Doo -doo -doo -doo. we got him. He was over there on Rutland Road and 94th Street. Doo -doo -doo. That's West Erie Avenue, Philadelphia. What is he doing in Brooklyn raising his hell? 5G technology. Collect data that quick. Oh, yeah, so during the coronavirus, when you couldn't go outside, they was building all these networks and towers. Peep game. Then they said, because the virus is so dangerous, we're going to release you from prison. Then a riot breaks out. We know they make money off of prison. They got to keep nine out of ten prison cells occupied in order for privatized prisons to survive. So the prison industrial complex took a big hit releasing people due to the coronavirus. Because they make money off of imprisoning people. And now, since the states are opening back up, uh, we got to fill the cells up. <clears throat> Let's see how this 5G works. All those people that was doing the looting and the robbing and stealing and everything. Yo, fam, get the car. We got his name. I got the car. We got his name. Yo, son, are you driving? We got his name. You know what Apple did? Apple put out a message like, hey, hope you enjoy looking at the silver laptops and stuff that you stole because we're tracking them all down. Anyone that stole anything from us. See, it just seems like good ideas. Yeah. Destroy the store. Break everything. It just seems like a great idea. And you're mad at grown adults that got to talk to you and say, oh, fam, that was stupid. It's stupid to destroy your community. Don't be affiliated, associated with anybody that's taking anything. How many people live streamed what they were saying? You see, people want to, yo, white people are the ones destroying the community. Well, not on my live stream. When I was on my live stream, I saw my people taking stuff. So much so I got the hell off the live stream for their own safety. <laughs> and I ensured, or I told the good brother, yo, get away from that and go home. 
Y'all can play this game, this kumbaya. Black people ain't doing nothing wrong in the middle of all this chaos. Y'all can play that game if you want. And then when this white man come down and lock everybody up for their BS, we gonna want to say, yo, that's just him taking advantage of it and throwing more brothers in prison. No, we we're wrong. We were definitely wrong. Definitely wrong. We saw the self gain in the chaos and we started stealing stuff. We saw the self gain. And our greed led us to the wrong decision making. We saw it. Just keep it 100. Negroes were stealing cars. Negroes on camera to the point we don't even care. We're literally on camera. Psh, let me take that out of the store. Yo, you want Heineken? You can't tell me this because I've seen several lives. Yo, we making it happen. You're destroying your community. That's what you're making happen. <laughs> but people mad at me. They don't like the voice of reason. You know, you ask me to talk because if I don't talk, I'm not with you all. Then when I talk, it's like, Negro, shut up. If you ain't going to support what we doing, we're burning our community down. You either with it or you're not. Where's your solidarity? <laughs> yo. Yo, listen. We getting abused left and right. So we all agree that we shouldn't tell no one what we're doing for a whole day. We shouldn't tell if we get hit upside our head today. Today, if anyone gets hit upside their head or the police beat them up, don't say nothing. Post a black picture. Post an image of something just black for the whole day. You know what that did? That made a lot of people who don't do nothing revolutionary feel like they was participating. How convenient. All I got to do is just post something, a blank image online and show solidarity. How convenient. But you see, when we talk in this talk, when we talk in this political action, when we talk in this real talk this whole time, guess what? You call us whole teppers. You make fun of us. There go them whole teppers again. Where's your mascara, polite? I don't see it on your eye. Right? That's what you do. Then you get bopped up your damn head, and then you say, yo, polite, we need help. We need backup. Come front line. There's not even a line out there. You guys are out of line. There's not even a line out there. There's scattered people. I've seen Batman in them damn riots. I seen the Joker in those rides. I ain't going nowhere. Once the Joker pop out, that last Batman movie, I ain't dealing with it. Disney even get, got rid of it because people was going crazy. White people are all involved in these rides. I have no idea what direction it's going in. People are mad at the coronavirus, mad at unemployment, and everybody's just jumping in this. <clears throat> then you got the Black Lives Matter group all in there. And I know it, it's, yo, the marketing is amazing. But if we go to the website and we look up the agenda for Black Lives Matter, I'm just saying I'm not part of all of that. I'm not part of all of that. And last time I spoke about them, <clears throat> the head, the good, my good lesbian sisters reached out to me like, yo, get down and lay down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me stop. <clears throat> and I said, I got love for y'all. Because I don't believe we should uh, abuse or disrespect people who have a different sexual preference. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe people should be treated badly because of their sexual preference. I don't believe in that. But I'm just saying, I need a movement that deals exclusively with us based on our complexion. <clears throat> As American Africans of the diaspora. Diaspora meaning that we've been displaced, we've been dislodged in society, and we suffer the consequence of being under an acculturation process. That is to adopt foreign ideas and cultures as our very own. In light of the fact <clears throat> that we've been kidnapped. We're on a foreign land. Many of us have been taken away from our lands that we are indigenous to. We've been stripped of a thorough knowledge of self and kind. That needs to be addressed before I start addressing sexual preferences. It's not prerequisite for me. I need to get this out the way. Now, if you're fighting for rights and not to be discriminated against, I hear you, and I'm not mad at that. I want everybody to be treated right and fairly, so I agree with all of that. 
Treat people respectfully. I don't care what you're doing. You could be having sex with goats. <clears throat> don't shake my hand. That's all I'm going to say. I, I don't need to be out here looking to hurt you because you want to have sex with goats. That's none of my business. <laughs> you walking with me? But I got, I got my own agendas. <clears throat> so I hear you. Like, oh, it's mad, I, don't know. I hear all of that. It makes sense. The sentence makes sense. But the movement means something totally different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The movement entails something totally different. And no, I'm not saying don't join the movement or whatever that is. I'm saying when you ask me, yo, why you don't got that hashtag there? It's because there's other things going on that I'm not part of. I'm not part of all of that. Show some solidarity. I can agree that our people are being oppressed and we need a plan of action. That's my solidarity. We got a community too. We got a body politic, actually. We've been organizing for the longest. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you guys something. Let me show you something. Hold on. Let me get this out of here real quick. Watch this. I've been doing this. Look at this. Here, why are you not on the front line? explain this. This is why I said to people, when you organizing, let me, let me, let me get back here. <clears throat> I'm not new to this. People are like, huh, I made it back alive. Yo, you need to get on the front line. Negro, you can't hashtag your way into the revolution. Stop it. You can't make this one murder make you a revolutionary overnight. You're going to be too sloppy. I'm not following you. You follow us. We've been teaching this every day out the year. You don't turn around and dictate to us. I got to be out there with you disorganized Negroes. Sorry, I pass. <clears throat> I pass. You ain't talk to me like I don't put work in. Like I don't be amongst army tanks and snipers. Tons of police. Like I'm not the speaker in front of everybody being identified as a damn terrorist. Like I ain't on CNN. Like I ain't on C-SPAN. Like I ain't on Fox. Oh, yeah, we need you there. We need you. Yo, shut up. It's just really that real. At this point, shut up. You got no plan of action. When we organize, pay attention. We make sure that we got attorneys on the front line. You, you guys keep saying front line. When I look at you guys front line, it's horrible. I can't even see a front line. At the front line, you have the people leading. <clears throat> that makes up your civil rights activists. You get some of those guys. You get some politicians, if you will. You definitely get some lawyers. You lawyer up. You get some attorneys there. So that way, people don't move in haste against you. They're more reluctant. Okay? The racial animus that they perpetrate against some people, they'll be reluctant to do it to others because they'll say to themselves, yo, we can't get put in the news for bopping 10 lawyers over their head. Okay? It's just not going to look good. So you put your attorneys there. So we had black lawyers for justice right there. Attorney Malik Zul Shabazz leading the way. Boom. We had other organizations that we talked to amongst each other before we start leading. And my security is on the wings. We create parameters. Everyone has to be inside of the wings. Everybody we create a rectangle, everybody has to be inside the rectangle. The security has to be outside of it to make sure our people don't break the plane. Because our men are disciplined. We don't know how other people are going to act at random if the police push them or there's a little bump. We don't want agent provocateurs to destroy opportunities that we have to mobilize the people. We also have checkpoints where we stop at. And we already have security at the checkpoints to debrief us on the climate of each checkpoint before we get there. So there'd be nothing that shocks us along the route. We also say if there's any neighborhoods here, we're going to deploy our people into the residential areas 
make people aware that we out here and see how many people can we get to join the rest of our movement as we are en route to hear me do a lecture. To organize the people, to take names, <clears throat> cities and states, establish dates and times to continue following up. We take advantage of these opportunities to organize. So when things happen, we can be more prepared and able to respond without moving in haste or moving with emotion, emotion void of intelligence. So there's a bunch of emotional people running outside and coming back home. Huh, I made it. Yo, why y'all not out there with us? Because what y'all doing is weird. It's just weird. That's weird. We don't do that. We're going to organize properly or we ain't going to organize at all. I don't go nowhere with 10 people and wind up with 15 people going the same direction that 10 of us decided where we was going to go without asking, who's these other five people with us? And if people are going to come out in the name of we coming out to support you, then you got to follow some protocols, fam. Otherwise, you're not with us. You, you do that stuff over there somewhere. And new covenant members got to be insured. And the reason why they got to be insured is because if they kill one of us, our family going to get a million or more dollars. If we kill a hundred of us, that's going to be one-tenth of a billion dollars, a hundred million. If they injure us and we have to be admitted into a hospital, our insurance policy is going to pay 5000 or more. If a hundred of us get injured and admitted into the hospital, that's half a million dollars every day for as many days as we have to be in the hospital. Nobody wants to foot a one-tenth of a billion dollar bill or more. Nobody wants to foot a half million dollars a day bill. <clears throat> They'll be like, yo, listen, we're not playing fit. So I'm a strategist. We can't play the game they want. We don't destroy our community and make it a segue for people of more affluent areas to come in there and gentrify the community because the property value is now on decline. You know what Negro said? Great, so let's continue to destroy the community, then buy it back. First of all, that's just not how it works. <laughs> it's actually a stupid idea. Let's continue to destroy our community so we can buy it back. Wasn't the idea before destroying the community to buy back the block? So what was stopping you then? Oh, we're going to devalue it on purpose, and then where are you going to get the resources from? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yo, it don't work like that. Yo, we got child, we got child minds leading the chaos out there, and then people want you to join it. Watch this. Can't ever talk to me. I be telling people, man. Yo, you watch your damn mouth when you talk to me about come outside. You ain't on the front line. I was out there on the front line. Let me see how you organize. I show you how we do. So when we talking about the front line. Yeah, hold on. Let me show you something. Let me show. And of course, it's me that led the charge. Yo, when we get over there, when you watch the video in full, you'll see. I'm telling the family, yo, we got to get over there and get the people out their house. Real talk. <laughs> watch this. Special defense team into the Cleveland, Ohio community. While in traffic, we stopped cars to connect with the people. We then took to the ground to further mobilize the masses. We obstructed the commerce for that day by blocking the highways and also blocking the commerce that would have been conducted in front of the banks. Despite the excessive police presence, the SWAT teams, and even the helicopters above our heads, no form of intimidation would make us reluctant in our pursuit to further organize the people. So I'm saying this, people. Let me... Get back to here on Instagram. We gotta, we gotta get to Instagram and, and see what's going on. But first, <laughs> first, <clears throat> I'm not just talking this talk. You got Negroes who wanna play games. Where's Blight at? And he said we gotta. He gonna be the first one out here. When I, I ain't say none of that, bro. Stop that stupidness. You got me twisted with somebody else. I'm calculative. I don't follow people. I organize with people. 
Yeah, I, and first of all, I know an agent when I hear it, whether it's you speaking vicariously through that agent or they speaking vicariously through you. <clears throat> I know it when I hear it. Well, whenever somebody it attempts to rush me into a situation that makes no sense, I, I'm like, yo, these beasts think I'm going to be peer pressured into doing something stupid. No. <laughs> they hear my voice while people breaking those glasses. They take me down. Because my influence. And leave, leave the vagabonds to be out here on the street to live and do it again. I detach myself from that craziness. <clears throat> what the hell you mean why I stop? Is the only thing you want someone to do is go out there on them streets and raise hell? Do you know the hell I raise when I'm out there? <clears throat> I gotta probably bring you back to some of these videos. Been risking my life. But when you get more organized and more mature, you realize you can win in different ways. There's a time to go out there and do it. <clears throat> but every time something like this happens, you ain't going to have me out here as a family man running out there on them streets subject to anything that can possibly happen with too many people involved that we haven't got a chance to properly vet. Doesn't work like that. See? Because again, anybody that want to criticize, I'm open. I would do a live, have you come in, and you can weigh your work versus mine. And we'll see who runs out first. So it's not about that. Yeah. As a family man, I said that. As a family man, you don't <clears throat> you don't take your life for granted as a family man. As a family man, you become more calculative with the decisions you make because your decision impacts the rest of your children. If the black community is not going to sign an agreement to take care of all my children and my whole family because of my sacrifice and it's my responsibility to secure my situation. It's my responsibility to decide when I'm going to bust a move. Because to you guys, it's nothing. <clears throat> I'm a leader. I can't help it. So when I get out there and I do what I do, I'm going to be the one who's accused of stirring up the riot like I have been accused of in the past. You're not. <clears throat> you got to understand. When New Covenant goes out, we have our own armed security. When New Covenant goes out, we all have bulletproof vests. It's a different energy when we doing what we do. It's not like these y'all with the play play. Go out there, I'm going to throw a plastic bottle when these guys can't shoot me. <clears throat> We're not on that type of time. So when I got my brothers and I got to commission them to go out, when I got to deploy them into a scenario... To impact our people, it can't just be for TV. Because if it go down with us, it's going to be like it's never went down in history. Because I don't know how to show up to those type of volatile circumstances without that heat. I don't know how to not have the blicky when we are amongst people who hasn't hesitated. They haven't hesitated to use it against us. So you talk to a different person. Because I don't go to a highly threatening scenario. I don't go to a high risk environment without the blicky. <clears throat> and I'm not one of these slave Negroes out here who will gun down their own and then put, the, put it down when this beast comes to them and say, put your hands out so we can cuff you. I won't be taken like that. I'm just built different. So I got to think differently. About what, what is this all worth? <clears throat> What's the best way to approach it? Because now our community is developed totally different than the way it's ever been developed. I'm talking our body politic, new covenant. So I'm responsible for these brothers' lives. I can't put these brothers into a situation <clears throat> without considering what is it worth or what is it for. Because I'm not going to tell brothers, leave the blicky. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm not going to tell them, leave the ratchet. 
and let's go out here in a highly threatening situation, more threatening than you've ever been in before. And I know we've been in lesser threatening situations, and I told you, make sure you got the blicky, but this is the highest level of threat, and I'm going to tell you, keep it home. Uh, no. Because <clears throat> somebody got to be made an example out of if they touch me. That's how that works. That's how you show strength. That's how it works. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And what is it for? If we put ourselves in a situation where agent provocateurs can be there to provoke instances prematurely that we may have been able to evade had we been more organized. We have to be organized before we step out. We have to have people on deck leading the crowd and creating parameters within the crowd where the crowd has to stay inside so we can kind of contain ourselves. Which is what you see when we move. It's a structure. It's not random. There's meetings before we go out. It's not, yo, they just killed somebody. Let's go outside and let's, let's just get out there and let's just do something. And whoever ain't do nothing, whoever ain't come out, they not with us. That's all emotion and stupidness. I ain't got no time for that. I don't got time for that. You're way too emotional. You should have joined the organization a long time ago before you even stepped foot outside. So you can be reprimanded if you're out of line. You got a bunch of people who don't want to follow protocol, who don't want to join no organizations, don't want to join no group, don't want to be trained in self-defense or disaster relief. You don't know if you get shot three inches above your knee or three inches below your knee how to help a person that is the victim or how to help yourself. What do you do if you don't got no medics right there at your disposal? You got no training, but you're putting yourself in highly risky scenarios. You're no good to nobody if you're no good to yourself. If your brother can't be your keeper and he just means well, you're dead. If you don't know how to deal with a crowd running in the opposite direction. If you don't know how to practice being tear gassed. If you don't got checkpoints set up, if you don't got a degree of analyzing, yo, the situation has just went from level one to level two, from level two to level three. How do we react when we realize it? Who communicates with us? What's about to come? Yo, they got tickets! Run! Ah! That's what y'all be doing. You're supposed to have somebody way in front of the group that can debrief you. Yo, they're coming out right now. Okay, let's cut down this block and keep the energy moving. Oh, oh, we're going to bang. What are we really talking about doing here? We playing around with this. And then people get frantic. Because it's all fair to yell at the police and call them stupid. And, yo, you dummy, you monkey, you goofy. Uh, we hate you. Uh, until they hit you upside your head. Yo, you can't do this. This is against the law. You go out there and <clears throat> let those white people gas you. They know they could talk that crazy talk because they got a longer lifeline. You over there acting like you white to these police because you got a few white friends out there telling them how stupid they are. And a Negro go out there, yeah, yeah, and you know what? You goofy. And that white man go, bop, upside your damn head. Because you thought you was white for a few minutes. You got them Black Lives Movement thing going on, and you got all sorts of people out there, men wearing heels, everybody out there doing all sorts of stuff. Batman is out there, the Joker's out there, everybody's out there dressed up, being goofy. You start to get a little goofy. You start being a little slick and running off at the mouth thinking this is a damn game. Thinking you are empowering your community by talking negative to a policeman. And then they come out there and they just mace every damn body. Oh, yeah, this is against the law. Why are you doing? I seen Negroes kneeling on some BS Kaepernick stuff. Kneeling. And the police just clotheslined them. And everybody, oh my God. I'm like, you Negroes are crazy. <laughs> Yo, even my daughter laughing. Yo, listen. What would make a Negro, after police been pushed, talk crazy to? They got on riot gear. They already been told, yo, this is a high risk situation. It's either you or it's them. You out there talking about, I just came out here to give everybody water in case they get dehydrated. Why did they mace me? 
Y'all think it's a game. <clears throat> I don't need the organizer. Nobody who think they only out there to give out some water. Damn it, keep some of the water in the bottle in case you got to throw it at somebody. You out there walking around with empty water bottles, throwing it. <clears throat> Y'all crazy. <clears throat> I will not be part of nothing like that. The game has changed. Social media has really thrown things off. <laughs> I swear to you, I'll show the video. Negro is on his knee. Yo, we want justice, goddammit. We we need reform. And you, and you stupidies. Yo, police just ran over there, clotheslined his ass. And all you hear, sister go, oh my God. And then the police just start rushing. And all you hear is people saying, you can't do this to us. Our, we have rights. This is not the place for that conversation. <clears throat> you guys couldn't get enough of going outside. You survived day one. You survived day two. And you survived day three. You went out there a fourth time. You guys are lucky. Because before day one was enough, where everybody was like, yo, we had enough. That riot was crazy. It was dope. It was deep. We, we done though. Let's find another way to organize. They let y'all have a false sense of, of self-esteem. And it's all a setup. And I, I, I'm, I'm glad about the uprising and people being angry. I'm glad. But yo, what do you do with the anger though? The way we channeling the anger energy is just not calculative. It's overly emotional. If you shake up a bottle of soda and you take the top off, it fizzes out. And when you put the top back on, there's less soda in there than it was before because of the shake. If you shake up a bottle of water, you take the top off, you see the bubbles and everything. The water identified with the shake, but the content isn't less than what it was prior to the shake. When you put the top back on, it's still the same amount of water in there. So what we learn is soda is reactionary and water is proactive. We have to learn how to be proactive like water, not reactionary like soda. Whereas when we get shaken, we become less than ourselves. No, now we're no longer intelligent. We've been shaken. No, when you get shaken, yo, you feel the shake. But you don't become less than yourself. What do you do? So what do we do, polite? What part you ain't understanding, my good brother? Don't destroy your damn communities. You, de you devalue the property, and then you segue for gentrification in the next two to three years. Easy. Might be expedited, because we put in some serious work in our community this year. <laughs> Challenge the gang members to keep that peace energy amongst themselves, like they do when the white man is involved. Protest against each other peacefully when they don't like when one of their brothers get killed by the other one. Do the protests like they do when we get killed. Protest the same way in your community peacefully. Show that you guys can unite when you kill each other. Show that you guys can unite after someone has been killed in your gang community. Like you come out to unite when someone's been killed in the black community. Keep the same peaceful energy. Because either you banging or you peaceful. I'm confused. I thought they were banging. I don't, have a, I don't have an idea what gangs are no more. They're not what they used to be. They're not what I thought they were. <clears throat> I just can't keep up with who and what they are. No, all gang members ain't out to defeat everybody. All gang members ain't out to kill each other. I know that. But we're not going to pretend we don't know the issues taking place in our community. We're not going to pretend like we don't understand what's going on in Chicago. Like we don't understand what's going on in L.A. Like we don't understand what's going on in New York. <clears throat> Philly damn near had the highest homicide rate and they don't really be dealing with gangs. I don't know what the hell's going on in Philly. I just, I know everybody else's homicide rate be gang related. I don't know what Philly got going on in there. It's a bunch of Muslims and people are dying. They once had like the highest rate in the world for homicide or they was like number two or three <clears throat> in America. That's all I'm saying. Either you guys are men of peace and you ain't about that life, or you men of war. And if you are, we need you badly. To be organized, though. I'm not sending nobody on a death mission. So what do we do, Polite? I said join a damn organization. Join, join the community. Don't overnight revolution because you're going to be sloppy and make a lot of mistakes. <clears throat> I don't know how you think other people organize back in the day. 
But you got to have people that's part of a movement throughout the year so they can help the people who are excited overnight so those people that are excited overnight don't jeopardize our lives because they don't have no discipline. Join somebody. See, I don't just say join us. Brotherpolite.com is right there, pinned to the top. Join our community. We teach you about political action. Teach you how to make money. You you can be, yo, this ain't time to make no man, this white man money. Eh, you can say all of that. <clears throat> he told my money again. Uh, this is what you do. But guess what? When all this rioting and everything is done, you're going to realize, oh, shit, I was unemployed. Yo, my house is about to be foreclosed upon. Yo, they really want that money back that I didn't have to pay this whole time. <laughs> we got to still address that issue. We being attacked based on health, being attacked based on finance, and we being attacked based on politics. The front line isn't just being outside dealing with that threat. You also have to deal with the economical threat. The socio-economical, th the, the socio-economical threat. You got to deal with that. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? So you got to address that. And what I do stands for itself. Because I'm going to tell you this. Ain't nobody got more testimonies than I do just coming in, stemming from the last, I could say today. <laughs> but stemming from the last two weeks. Ain't nobody got more testimonials than I. And we go back a month, you might be booked for a lifetime. If you got any questions, you can go to the Brother Polite Investment Group, the BPI Group. You can go over there and find out what my people are doing over there. Every day I post testimonials. Receipts is what you guys like to call it on social media areas. In the social media area, you like to call things receipts. You need receipts. You go to brotherpolite.com, you can see some. We about to glaze that whole thing, though. Because I got the video testimonials and please people continue to send your video testimonials. I want to exhaust it. Brother Polite, spend the million you have to get the black community. Ah, I'm not going to read the rest. That shit sounds stupid. <laughs> sounds stupid. <clears throat> you sound ignorant. You sound like a bum. And, you, and I don't mean that to be disrespectful to you. You just sound like a bum because I heard bums say stuff like that. Stop asking somebody to come a million out there. Stop this BS. Stop asking somebody to give up a million dollars towards what? You guys don't even have a business plan. Stop this foolishness. This is what you do. If there's over 327 million people that make up the American populace, of 12 of which, 12% 12 of which is black people, there's, if there's over 30 million black people that make up the American populace, in or around, we can average it out. There has to be groups of 10,000 black people that are angry about the same things and have idealistically the same objectives and perspectives for the most part. That can also afford $5 a week. If 10,000 people put up $5 a week, which is $20 a month, in 10 months we'll have $2 million. Stop asking people for a million dollars. Put your $5 up. There's over 10,000 of you. There's several groups, several clusters of 10,000 people that are angry. 10,000 of you say the white man's evil. 10,000 of you say, yo, we need reform, justice reform for the prisons. 10,000 of you, yo, there's several groups of 10,000. We make up millions of people in America. So, I had over 2,000 people in this live stream right here. Alone. That would be $40,000 a month. That'd be $400,000. Almost half a million dollars in 10 months. Just the amount of people that's on the live stream. So, I uh, miss me with the... Yo, when uh, July 7th come, make sure we all don't spend no money. So what, Negro? So the 8th, we can spend as much as we didn't spend the day before? Like, who's coming up with these stupid ideas? Yo, Black Friday's coming. Make sure you don't spin. Do you know what it means to be in the black? Or to get out the red? <clears throat> let, me, let me understand this. So, you want to tell members of the poor community, on Black Friday, let's show black solidarity, and let's spite the stores that are making things cheaper than they ever are throughout the year. Let's tell poor people, no, 
only spend on these supplies when they're the most expensive for the whole year. But the one day out the year where it's cheaper, tell black people don't buy it to show solidarity. Who's coming up with these ideas? And y'all hate me for this crazy. I can't. I can't do it. It's just so stupid to me. The one day everything's cheap. You know what we could do? Yo, everybody, buy them TVs five times and put it on eBay. You'll eventually sell it sometime throughout the year. Buy those laptops for cheap and sell it back. Buy everything you buy six or seven damn times since it's cheaper than it's ever been. Or don't buy much of anything throughout the year and bleed them out so when Black Friday comes, you can level up and get everything that you've been holding out on throughout the year. It's just strategy. So now I'm going to have a, a bunch of, uh, what you guys call it, black Twitter and black YouTube or whatever, what you guys call it. Now black Twitter is going to be like, yo, Polite's breaking all the black solidarity rules. I just want to see who's the leader of black solidarity. Because I bet you if we find out who the leader of black solidarity is, he, might, he probably wearing a, a, a Ku Klux Klan outfit. The leader of these black, <laughs> black unity ideas is probably a white man. Coming up with these crazy ideas. So. Yo, white man is probably coming up with all these crazy ideas, like, man. Like, Yo. Like huh? Dave Chappelle. Yeah, like that Dave Chappelle skit. Just like that Dave Chappelle skit. Where they had to get rid of his wife that was a member of the Klan because she was a, 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 a Negro lover. <laughs> And Chappelle, he was he was blind and he ain't know he was a black man. <clears throat> and he was in the Klan. I bet you the person that's running these black ideas is a white man. That's why I demand to see who's the leader of these intelligent ideas. Because it just seems like it works against us. You ain't gonna tell me the day out the year where technology is cheaper, kitchen utensils is cheaper, clothes is cheaper, the stores just need to get them out the way. You got to know what the black part of Black Friday means. I know y'all always think about race. You're not thinking about balancing the books. You're not thinking about inventory. Just like when you destroy your communities. You're not thinking about depreciation. Devaluing the property. You're not thinking about gentrification. Somebody keeps making us go against intelligent reasoning. Let me show you some of this. Why we can't come together <clears throat> Because you want to come together with everybody I don't want to come together with everybody I want to get together with stupid people So it just doesn't stress me out no more It's um, yeah, it be, Yo you calling people stupid You you want to read some stupid comments right now If you doubt Yo I got to find a comment Someone said the other day I was in tears They said yo Brother Polite think he's so smart But you know what Every food is not for everybody. Like, for, take for instance, vegans think that it's wrong to eat pork. But some people on the planet actually need to eat pork. So let's, let's, think, let's pull it back. It says some people on the planet actually need to eat pork. <laughs> I just was like, yo, I got to respond to this one. <clears throat> Sir, can you tell me which group of people on the planet actually need to eat pork to survive? <laughs> Do you know the pig... Doesn't even, it's the only planet in the world that doesn't have sweat glands. Do you understand? Ah, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to find that image. I got to have a date for the dumbest things that people write with pride. So that way, if there's a question about anyone being stupid, <laughs> we certainly could just reference that video and read the comments. Okay. <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. He not lying to y'all for bills. Hold on. It ain't neighborhoods because we don't own it or somebody white still on our blocks, school and community. We can't value anything we don't own. We are a red line and they still control us. So this was his excuse for why we should destroy the community because we don't own the community. OK, so somebody wrote exactly. So I wrote, makes sense. Go back and destroy your community then. Can't argue with that. Yo, yo, since we don't own the community and it made sense to destroy it, why don't you guys finish the job and continue going outside and destroy it? Why wasn't y'all destroying it before this riot? If, if the community isn't your community, let's, let's think about this. Mr. 
Mika Kula, right? Let's think about this. Let me show you how people don't believe the stupid stuff that they say. <clears throat> Let me show you how people don't believe the stupid stuff they say. Don't get mad at the people that destroy their community because it's not our community anyway. None of these stores are ours. Okay, so now my question is, you didn't just arrive at this revelation. You must have been known that this community was never ours and we can't take value in something we don't own. So why haven't you Negroes been destroying it prior? Why did you destroy it just now up until recent? I can tell you why. Because you was overly emotional. You're the Negro who's yelling at your phone on a girlfriend. You're yelling on the phone to your girlfriend. You're upset. You're screaming, top of your lungs. You get, ha, ah, I can't take her. That beat. And you throw it on the floor. <clears throat> you break your phone. And then you have to live with the consequences. Pick up your phone. Now, every time you use your touch screen, you're, you're cutting your finger because it's cracked. And every day you got to live with the fact you, the dumbass, was the one that got so angry in a haste of emotion. Bow. You threw your phone on the floor. Ah, I can't stand you. This hit. And you throw it. Psh. Now when you got to put your finger across the screen, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> Yo, that's what emotion do. You're not going to tell me that this whole time you knew we were supposed to destroy the community, but you only decide to do it right now. Because we don't really own the community. <laughs> Yo, it's just stupid. We got to just call, keep it real. Even if you was caught up in the stupidity, at least you can come out. I said I was caught up in stupidity. I said I was being a gang member. I was a coward. I was over here putting mad energy into my people the whole while. Different people was abusing our race, and I was just focusing on our people. Yo, I had to tell the truth. It happens. And I pride myself in being brilliant. But one of the things that makes you brilliant is being able to recognize when you've been fooled, when you've been tricked, when you were in error. It happens. <laughs> yeah, definitely share this video. Yo, watch this. So, no, we don't believe you. You're not going to tell me, yeah, we should destroy the community because we don't own nothing. Because that's the case, you should go out there destroying your community every day of the week. <laughs> Explanation to our young ones. Don't just tell people stop destroying properties. Give them a reason. Show them a better way. Look at these people upset with me. I show you the better way by telling you about real estate. Look at these Negroes. And I respond to them. And I said, oh, so you didn't read my caption. Oh, you don't see the website where I say, oh, you don't see the caption that says join the community for political action class. You don't see none of that. Burn this shit down. Look at this Negro. Named Born King Senna. Look at all these gangsters that wasn't burning it down until now. So you mean to tell me they just found out <clears throat> that police brutality existed? See, that's what I'm saying. If you guys are about what you're saying, y'all would have been burning everything down before you seen a person get abused and it be commercialized. People get abused all the time. For whatever reason, they chose to commercialize this form of abuse. Burn this shit down. And if the property value drops, then we buy it up and fix our community. <laughs> oh my gosh, people. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Let's read it again. Burn this shit down, and if the property value drops, then we buy it up and fix our own community. <laughs> Yo, I'll do it one more time. Burn this shit down, and if the property value drops, then we buy it up and fix our own community. <laughs> Yo, so that's the strategy now. We're going to destroy our community on purpose so we can buy it back. <laughs> why, don't you just, why don't you just own the community in the first place, you silly ass? <laughs> Yo, this, these are the people leading these movements, and you saying, Yo, Polite, why are you not out there with us? But no one's asking this person for the solution, right? No one's saying, yo, you got to give us response. If, you, if I said, yo, let's burn it all down, nobody would be over there writing, hey, man, you got to tell us why we have to burn it down. Everybody just go along with it. But when you come at them intelligently, then it's like, yo, why you don't give us reasons? Dumbass, there's a whole 10-minute video here giving you reasons. What are you talking about? My whole page gives you reasons. What are you talking about here? Hold on. Oh, that's something different. Pardon me. Hold on. Let's 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 keep this going. Okay, what else we got? My question to you, brother Polite. 
what do we do? I could be wrong. I see a lot of downtown shit getting effed up. Which downtown property way to hide across the country? Da 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 da. My law enforcement will be dead in 200 years. It's given the mindset that it's okay to kill us, my brother. Yeah, I'm giving that mindset. I swear our people don't understand this fact. Hold on. How do I get on your team? Hold on, hold on. There was a bunch of silly stuff here. It's just a whole bunch of new comments. First of all, we are not destroying our communities. We, as in the protesters, if don't know by now, then that the only people destroying anything were provocateurs. So listen to this guy. The only people destroying anything were provocateurs, police officers, caught on camera, by the way, and other morons that don't live in our community, <clears throat> then you're part of the problem. So, let's be for real. Let's be for real. Are our people really going to lie and say we wasn't part of destroying our community? I ain't about to fight with no one about this. Because I know I've seen the live stream videos. We got people who still posted the activity going on in their community. I guess it was random black people that's not from our community. Probably from another black community. They, they probably abused the hell out of their community and ran out of stuff to abuse and ran over to another black community. But you're not going to tell me that the only people that's been destroying these communities are officers and agent provocateurs. No, I do believe, I do know that that is part of the game too. But you ain't going to lie to me and then and create this kumbaya moment again and make it like only black people were, they were the only innocent, they were only innocent in this whole ordeal. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. You want to take me to somebody else when I'm talking to us. That's the problem with our people. I ain't going to go over there and tell them don't play like that because that's the way of the game. They call it a race. Some, some people cheat in the race. So I'm not worried about telling other people how to win this race. I'll talk to you guys. Hey, look, you got low insight and facts, but you ain't helping nobody. You just talking. How you going to get on a video and start telling people stop doing this and that because of some shit we already know. Fact is, people could care less. So check it out. Start strategizing with all that intellect and make a video telling the people what they should do, not what they need to stop doing. Oh, so don't tell people what to stop doing. <clears throat> just tell them what they need to do. Jackass. What they need to do is stop doing the things that they're done. <laughs> Yo, stop telling the people what he said. He said, all that intellect can make a video telling the people what they should do, not what they need to stop doing. It's the same thing, idiot. What they need to stop doing is what they're actually doing. Weird. <clears throat> but hey, I got the real estate class coming up. But you see, when those classes are available, then people be like, what are you doing for the community? See, it's, it's, it's never, these people will never be satisfied, no, no amount of work you do. They talk, they talk, and I say, yo, you been on the front line before? Have you been on Fox where they make you out to be a black terrorist? <clears throat> so what are you saying, Mr. Brother Polite? Are you saying that we should be physical against the police. <laughs> they waiting to catch me any way they can catch me. And you just got to be witty enough. And you got to also be willing to sit in the fire. But like I said, at the end of the day, the people telling you, yeah, go out there and give it to them. Yeah. They're never going to do nothing for your family when you're locked up. And in fact, when this beast tells lies on them, the activists, when this beast says, yo, we're going to entrap everybody and put them in a space where they believe that this their leader is doing the wrong thing you know what people do they just gonna do youtube videos and, and say they're exposing you so they can make some revenue streams from youtube adsense for the commercials because everybody believed that this beast is underhanded until they say some things about your leader and then your own people come behind it to make some money off of youtube to get some coins Oh, I'm going to expose them too. And I'm exposing them too. I'm going to expose them too. And then you wonder why nobody wants to defend or celebrate, uplift, or take the risk for the black community. 
but we don't demonstrate loyalty to ourselves. We don't give each other the benefit of the doubt. We can see a black man do a plethora of positive things, and it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. All we need is for this beast to be like, nope, he just did this, <clears throat> and all the Negroes will follow. And in fact, he'll hire black people to come into the black community where we all working hard to be conscious. He'll hire black people and make their whole job be create distrust amongst members of the same community by doing all these videos to make them question every single leader. So you literally have two or three black men on YouTube whose whole job is dedicated towards making you distrust people in the community that are getting knowledge itself. That's their whole claim to fame. Periodically, they might introduce a white guy on the show or something. But after that, there we go. They don't even put half the effort they put into their own community to destroy their leadership that they're doing to other people. So, we got all that data on our website. Whole bunch of free classes I'm constantly giving. If you watch my Instagram day to day or that Facebook group, you know that I'm constantly empowering people. Like, not no speculative, motivational speaking, like helping them get their money. Get money. Like, that's, I'm not gonna avoid that. And many of you know what's going on, because every day I'm posting receipts that just got posted from people saying that I just made money. Not no regular money, may I add. I got people making 12,000, 5,000, 20,000, 330 minutes, 410 minutes. So I'm going to be cocky. Pause. I'm going to be in a space where I'm like, yo, <laughs> you feel me? Like, you can't tell me nothing because you can't, you can't measure what you do. Against what I do, if since you want to tear me down like I'm doing nothing, I don't go around here knocking other people's effort. But don't come over here talking crazy to me because I know I help people pay their bills. I don't give a damn about all that spooky stuff you're talking about. I help people pay the bills. You could expose black people. I help people get their get bread. That's what I help people do. I help them get their bread. I help them get their money so they can pay their bills. I help them send their children to school. I do it for free. Every single day online. Bloop. Haven't been wrong yet. Bloop. 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 I just post. And that don't even count when I deal with the health. And we want to start getting technical and how I'm helping people with their health and all that. That's a whole nother thing. But one thing we definitely can't deny is people making money. Can't deny that. Can't deny that. Right? We do one more. I'm about to get out of here. Wow, this guy is effing smart. That's pretty cool. Appreciate that one. Dang, it was. I should have took the time out to uh, isolate some of these things because it was pretty wild. Oh, I gotta press that. Why did not let me? Oh, there we go. Okay, George Soros, 5G. I get it. Uh, hold on. It's not our community. Uh, it's not our community. They will never be fair. Why is the black people who have money now coming down on those who now forgotten where they came from? Most of y'all already have charges on your record, so you judging when before the money, you definitely be riding in this well. The question is, is it right or is it wrong? That's the question. But most of them, if not all, don't own the property. They live in, brother. They are 97% renters. And puts a fire emoji. And I have no idea what that means. So I say you shouldn't burn down your community. And you create an opportunity for other people to take what little you have away from you. And so the reply is, but most of us don't own our property. 97% of us don't in the community. So you rather your children come out and see trash? And things that's been burnt down. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. You say so. I just don't know what, what is the harm in doing peaceful protests outside of your community just in case things get out of control. I just don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know what language I might be speaking. Bienvenido a la tienda. Like, yo, is it sounding like that when I'm talking? Like, what does it sound like when I'm speaking? I need to know if what I'm saying is really so ridiculous. Hey, don't protest in your community. Go somewhere else. Let someone else clean up their floor. Just throw out campaign stickers and buttons and all that over there. Let, let's let's see how it feels. Someone else got to clean up the mess after the drama. <laughs> we some convenient protesters, convenient gangbangers. We want revenge against ourselves and we want justice when other people perpetrate the same heinous acts or worse. What do you own? Who's that for? That's for me. What? Like houses? Yeah, I own houses. On my own business. I got my own publishing company. I hire my own people. Yeah, I don't use Amazon. I don't allow other races as much as I possibly can to send their children to school or for my intellectual property. I publish my own books. I have my own team of graphic designers. I got my, my filmographer over here right now. Who, watch this. I film my man AJ right here, right now. Film, flew him in from Philadelphia, second time in a row, within the last three weeks. Flew him in, so he could do some some video work for me, because I'm busy. And then, what's the next place I said I need you to fly in for me? Utah. Utah. So he could film our new covenant trainer, our official new covenant trainer, who gets paid by me, so we can have tutorial videos for fitness. That's exclusive to our new covenant membership. So I'm paying my filmographer to go to Utah next to film our new covenant trainer, edit up the videos so I can have it posted exclusively for members of our new covenant community as part of our curriculum. But right now he flew into town to get me ahead of the game. So I have content, so I have content that I can keep in constant rotation. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, you see, people don't think you're doing for black people if they're not the black people that immediately being impacted. Now, I could hire my wife's mom, which I did, and pay her as well. But it wouldn't matter because she don't count as black people. It's only black people if my money reach your pocket. <laughs> they be doing the same thing to Floyd. <clears throat> For real, that's how that's how they do though, man. <clears throat> they say Floyd don't help black people, but he hired his uncles, he hired his aunts, he hires his best friends, he he hires his friends' friends, he hires people that he know from his community, he hires his nephews. <clears throat> but they say he don't help black people because none of them people is considered to be black because they close to him. If if you know me, you ain't no longer black when you make the money from me, because I ain't helping black people. If I'm helping black people, I know. <laughs> that ain't my fault. You wasn't attaching yourself to successful-minded black people that eventually become successful. Come on. And, and that's even ignorant because people benefit from my books. They benefit from my classes. They benefit from my live streams. So I, I just, it's like, I don't know what people be talking about. I have, I, I reconcile. I think I'm speaking English, but I think it's coming out something different. <laughs> when it hits the when it hits the feed, that shit probably be like wah 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 wah. I don't know what it sound like, cause some people just don't get it. Word. Thank you, Wanda. Like that was my personal assistant that just called me, Cardi, and I got another personal assistant, Linda. Then I got a publicist, Dennis. Then I got an attorney, Kenny. I have my own agent, manager, publicist, personal assistant, personal assistant, 
two CPAs, one accountant to review the other accountant. I switch one accountant every six months. I keep the other one consistently. Keep one in rotation. Keep one consistently. The CPA, CPA, manager, agent, entertainment attorney, litigation attorney, just on standby. Publicist, yeah. filmographer, got my own publishing company, personal assistants. Yo, I work to build this up. I don't, even, I don't make this up. I don't. That's my wife, mom, that was just building. I don't make this up. What do I own? When you get those books, you know, you got a Negro out there. He ain't got no companies. Yo, he ain't got no companies. But when y'all get my books, what does it say on the packaging? When you conduct a transaction, what does it say? Brother Polite, LLC. And guess what it's owned by? Brother Polite Trust. Like, yo, it's, it's like, but people say you should respond. When a young weirdo starts talking, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, yo, hey, he says I ain't got company. I can, what I'm going to do? Sue a broke person? I'm not wasting my bread. Like, he's good. They want bread from me. I don't want bread from them. I'm good. I'm self-made. So now nah, you didn't tell me take a million I work hard for. Yo, listen. I give the blueprint so my people can make bread. I show my people the exact way how I make bread so they can make bread. And many of you know I ain't telling no story. I be sitting here and dedicating my time, act, missing out on trades because I'm cutting and pasting and copying as fast as I can, sending it to my assistant so they can upload to social media. I show you. I just bought this real quick so people can just get on the way. Boom. <clears throat> do what they do. Word. And there's some business I don't tell people what I got. I don't want you at the check cash and realize, yo, brother Polite owns this check cash. I'll be damned. I'm gonna drive 20 miles away from this one. Nah, you gonna cash your check. <laughs> you ain't gonna know I own that shit. Freak that. <laughs> That's how we are. I work hard. And uh, any of you that's in my stock class and that's benefiting, you guys can only imagine with as many times every day out the week how I'm like, look, I just bought this. And you see that thing go triple. And you see that thing go double. And sometimes you see that thing go eight or nine times. You guys will have to ask yourself, yo, if Polite got everybody else eating, what is this dude doing with his bread? <laughs> see, stupid people, like incredibly dumb people, will tell you, oh, he's taking from the people. That's what he's doing. But people that's actually walking with me, people that actually take my classes, they'll not only say, no, logically it doesn't make sense because what he teaches, he definitely knows what he's about. But you know what the ultimate conclusion is? Yo, bro, everyone's making money with him. He's t literally showing people exactly what he does. Like, literally, I'm about to do this right now. And people are making money every single day throughout the week. Every day out the week, this man is posting what people are reposting because they just made money off of something that he taught them about. So chances are if he's making people money every single day from things that's going double, going triple, quadruple, 40%, 30% their money. Hmm... If he's showing people all of these different things, he must be probably using all of them. Now, my people will probably use one or two, maybe three or four, depending on how much money they got to spread. But do you think I'm, you think I'm not using the information that everyone else is benefiting from? What would I need to take when I can triple my 10 G's in 30 minutes? Somebody tripled their bread today and said, I did that in 30 minutes. I made $300 in 30 minutes. Y'all see when I put my bread up, I put five grand in. I put 10 grand in there. I play the game. Sometimes I don't. Yo, I, I, you know what? I'm going to be a little scary tomorrow. And I'm going to show you a six-figure investment. I'm going I'm to I'm be crazy tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be crazy tomorrow. <laughs>
I'm going to be crazy tomorrow, and I'm going to post a six-figure investment tomorrow. So what do you think? I'm not wise enough to say, yo, I'm right again. Hope, I'm right again. Hope, I'm right again. Hope, I'm right again. Hope. Yo, how you write some? Because, yo, I do math. I teach sentential calculus, calculus, geometry, geometry sentential calculus. All, yo, all of that. All of that. Trigonometry, algebra, I do all of that. Teach sentential calculus, calculus, algebra, geometry, all of that. So guess what? Like the way I'm wired, yeah, I dropped out of school 10th grade, but I'm just wired differently. Like the things that get my interest and the things that I retain, I'm just wired differently. I'm wired very differently. So it's nothing for me to share what I know because it's nothing that's going to be taken from me when I share it. In fact, more is added on to me when I share it with other people. And people can talk what they talk, but that's why I talk with such conviction because I know anyone that say anything about me can't really level up. I challenge anybody who claim they're doing anything for black people, right? Show me what they gave you with money. I'll show you what my people did with just a $99 course. i show you what my people did with a $250 course. I made this course the cheapest course I ever did, and I worked the hardest to ever create it and produce it. I just wanted to show forth my proof and prove my power. And I said, because of the coronavirus, I'll come down on the price of my course just so. The Negroes would be like, yo, it's because he needed the money to do the course. Well, anyone who took my course would know I didn't need the money to take the time out to teach them the course. Anyone that's taken my course knows. <laughs> anyone. Most people who take, yo, thank you for taking the time. Because they then realize, yo, son knows so much about this stuff. He ain't really got to talk to no one. And if you realize, people, I retired from doing lectures. I took my books out of publishing, and I still managed to survive. I barely was on YouTube. Barely. I'm still barely on YouTube. I'm working hard now to make that better. Think about it. I fell back. And when I came back, they, oh, he needs some money. That's why he came back. Huh? So what was I doing for the two, three-year hiatus I took? I retired. No more debates. Traveling the world. Let's be for real. Let's be for real, people. Let's be for real. I make sure everybody. I need to do a class where I just show members of the staff. So you can ask how much I paid my attorney, how much I paid my agent, how much I paid my publicists, how much I paid both of my assistants, how much I paid my personal secretary, how much I paid my filmographer to be flying back and forth and pay for this coming, I pay for his going, and I pay for the work that he does. And I don't overwork nobody. My uh, man right now is, yeah. is eating some bake and all sorts of Jamaican stuff that my wife's Guyanese mom made. This nigga is lacking. Take a look at this nigga. This nigga right here, he is lacking. <laughs> He's just eating. My wife's mom made him something. He's just chilling. Okay. <laughs> And getting paid good bread. And guess what? At the end of the day, I'm back and forth. Because I bought a home in Miami during this coronavirus. But I'm out here with my mom's wife because she works for me as well. And we just get getting some stuff going on. So I'll be back and forth. So when I got to get the business done, wherever I'm at, who, whoever I got coming through for the business, doesn't matter. I can, I can get it done. First big win with Hertz made over eight hundred dollars in thirty minutes. Thank you, Leslie Burrows. Thank you. Send me a thirty second video. Say your name, your city, and state, and inbox it, please. The sisters, please. Y'all be wanting to do your hair and do your nails, and then next thing you know, you never get to doing the video. I need some more sisters for the videos. I have plenty of brothers. You know what I mean to me to death and doing a bunch of videos inside of a car. I don't know what the culture is, but people are going to start thinking that I demanded that everyone take the classes in, the, in a car. I got enough people sitting in the car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody please do your presentation, do your testimonial on a motorcycle or something. Like, stop doing them in cars. I got enough car ones. I know you guys would never even know how much car testimonials I have, but I have to actually spread it out. And leave this one for video two and this one for video three. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hertz definitely took off. 
Amazon talking about buying them right now. It's very interesting. But the New York Stock Exchange just took them off. Well, they the New York Stock Exchange just delisted them. So, of course, that's going to impact the stock. Whilst at the same breath, Amazon is like, yo, we want to buy you. So it's a lot of confusion. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. For some people, they think it was bold. For me, it was common sense. Hertz went bankrupt. I was like, yo, they're only 40 cents now. I caught them. Most of the shares are bought around 80 cents. I say, yo, y'all know me. But I told you this is highly risky. One week, I tell you in class, purchase and bankrupt stocks if you understand them. Understand it's a high level of risk, but understand you'll be getting them for pennies on a dollar. So if a stock is going to be $20, $30, whatever, you get them while they're still public. Because they got two, three more rounds of bankruptcy before they completely tap out. If you understand the circumstance to which they've been victimized, you know they're victims of circumstance. What if the circumstance ceased to exist? The circumstance was social distancing. If the states are opening up, would a car rental company still be in under certain duress? I said if the states open up on time. That's going to be a good look. So I bought some call options to own the future because I put my money on the fact that in the future they will make money. And then I did something in the present because I believe in the near future it's going to go up. Hey, I'm willing to lose. I said I was willing to lose $4,500. I said I was willing to lose $4,500. <laughs> I gained over 32,000 And I wasn't going to lose the 4,500 I had a limit loss So I would have stopped at like 2,200 I was willing to lose 2,200 out of 4,500 dollars But I gained 32 G's You know how much shares I bought for 40 cents? And then I bought some for 80 cents. <laughs> I bought 10,000 shares, yo. <laughs> yo, it's crazy. But anyway, I don't intend unless I know how to exit. I thank you guys. Love you guys. Yo, yo, those profits, hey, yo, we doing this every week. Everybody that's in class, I salute you. Go get that class. If you're not there, go to the crisis. It's pinned to the top. You go to brotherpolite.com, brotherpolite.com. I'll see you guys early in the a.m. Don't worry. Membership as of tomorrow, we'll have. I Not as of tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll see y'all in the a.m. Doing what we do. We make our money in the a.m. Sun rises at 930. I'm not really with the pre-market game. But I love them after hours. The club be popping. After 4 p.m., I be in the after hours spot. It's a different energy up in there. Damn, it's such an illusion. It's the matrix in the after hours. But I got to get you guys in tune with the after hours. The rules of engagement. Yeah, tops, tops, pre-market, tops triple. If you guys are paying attention to the pre-market, tops may be 18 cents right now, but tops was 65 cents in a pre-market. Official stock is up 35 cents. It's up to up to 91 cents now. You bought 3,000 shares. Okay. You almost tripled your money. All right. Class be official. Thank you, Jamel Jones. <laughs> Let's get it. Appreciate that. Man, you know XRP is life. Come on now. Yeah, I mean, Tops is cool because you can get in real low, get a whole bunch, and then you can play around with it. It's, it's a nice little cheap thing to get in there. It's, it's fun. But I see you guys, not pre-market, I'm going to see you guys when the sun rises, 930, right? And I'll, I'm definitely in the after-hour spot. I'm always in the after-hours, Thursdays and Fridays. It's the end of the week. That's when I'm in the after hours. Raising hell, I'm out there. Yo, I'm, I'm wilding in the after hours. So we definitely going to see each other in the after hours. And um, 
we're gonna do what we normally do but next week for the new covenant members we're gonna have those automated responses for you so you can catch them in, even real time i'm not gonna always be able to post where everybody who wants to stuff the information for free and they making a little bread on for free I'm not gonna be able to do that for the community all the time. I just be doing that because I just like being a freedom fighter. I like just showing the world that I can sit here and literally make anybody money, just in random. I, I love the feeling of making other people money. That thing just makes me feel powerful. I love it because it's supposed to be the hard thing to do on planet Earth. So I just love being that guy that says, yo, watch this. <laughs> I'ma crack the code. And when I'm done today, I want to be responsible for making people over 100 grand every day. Like, this would be my energy. And I got to raise the number up because I'm impacting that much more people. So, I won't be able to always do that, but I do owe the community that because part of joining the community, I have an obligation to make sure members of our community are always making bread and, and have the opportunity to do so. We will be coming with the real estate course we're going to open it up for payments starting sunday or saturday probably starting saturday maybe 12 midnight or something like that but you guys are making enough money so that was the strategy get you guys to make enough money and then we're going to teach about something else i'm not selling you the real estate i'm not selling you the stocks i get you to the information i i made sure you can make the money so you're not looking through the glass and window shopping and attempting to find out how i'm gonna get the money to get to that i hope you guys with your credit i hope you get six figures line of credit through the credit restoration microwave yo listen this is what i do and that was 3k but oh my gosh three thousand dollars yeah to remove all your debt and then make sure you have six figures yeah why not word up this is this is light this is light so it's so crazy people gotta think something negative is going on <laughs> That's how crazy it is. I write over 90 books. They be like, yo, you plagiarize. I got more than one nice home. They be like, yo, that must be Airbnb. <laughs> Drive a nice car. Oh, that's a rental. This is what we dealing with. But I talk to you guys. Peace and many blessings. Love you guys for real. Iluvu. See you tomorrow for the market. Peace.